out of enemy territory, we'll contact one of our consuls. He can always arrange to get us back to Germany somehow. Yeah, but we'll have to get clothes and a way to get to him. It shouldn't be difficult in peace-loving America. They are easy to fool. Achtung! We interrupt this broadcast to give you the latest news of the escaped Nazi prisoners. It has been reported that three men were seen jumping from a Canadian train as it approached the American border. They have evidently evaded the border patrol. We now give you a description of these three men. Please remember these descriptions and your reporter suggests that you tell everybody to be on the alert for these killers. They have shown that no one can feel safe until they are caught. Uncle Jim! Uncle Jim! The radio says the Nazis are here. Uncle Jim! We have just received a flash that three men answering the description of the three escaped Nazis were seen crossing the Wyoming state line. They are... The three escaped Nazis were seen crossing the Wyoming state line. They are believed to be heading south. A gigantic manhunt is now in progress, with authorities vowing not to give up until the merciless Nazis have been captured. Turning now to the European situation, I heard as how one of them critters talk English plumb near as perfect as I do myself. Well, I just wish they'd show up around here, them sidewinders. I'd give them a welcome and talk to them in the only language they all understand. Jed, I'm not dependent on any old-fashioned gun. I got me the newest thing, a rifle with a telescopic sight. Boy, I'll pick them off a mile away. 
All I need now is a box of shells. Coming right up. Yeah, well, they should have been caught long ago. And if you want my personal opinion, I think they're being hit out by one of their own countrymen. And they seem to be everywhere. I hope they ain't friends of yours, Doc Steiner. Doc's a refugee from Germany. He has no Nazi friends. You needn't be so suspicious of us. I could understand it if this were Germany, where everyone suspects everyone else because they're afraid. But here in America, where there's freedom... Listen, Parker. You've been against Doc and his experiment ever since we brought him out here. Why don't you quit shooting off that big mouth of yours until he's had a chance to show what he can do? Well, every man's got a right to his own opinion. Here's those chemicals you ordered, Doc. I hope they work. Here's your shells, lullaby. If you can get rubber out of those cleaver bushes, Doc, these farmers around here won't be going broke every time a drought hits them. Oh, when the Doc gets through spraying them bushes with this stuff, we're going to have ourselves a crop of rubber tires. <laughs> <laughs> All right, good night, Jed. Good night. Good night, Jed. Oh, see you later, Jed. Good night, Jed. Good night. Good night, folks. See you later, Jed. Say, this gun's a dandy. I need one like this. Fourteen ninety-eight. That's cheap. I'll take it. Just a minute, lullaby. That's a serial number you're reading. That gun's fifty-eight dollars. Oh, I don't need it that bad. <laughs> I do for you? You want to buy a couple of guns? Any particular kind? The best you've got. Well, we ain't nothing better than a good old 45. Especially for hunting Nazis. You know, we whip the fighting Comanches with them. Ain't much different between the Comanche and the Nazi. Except you don't want to let the Comanche hear you say so. I'll take this one. And some ammunition. Oh, all right. There you are. I suppose you've got a permit. Yeah, I got one. Right here. <laughs> I guess I should have known. The get up and the lingo kind of fooled me. Shut up. I've looked into a 45 before and had my say. And I ain't a changing my spots now. now. I reckon the whole world ain't a changing its spots because some murderous. changing its spots because some murderous coyote with a toothbrush mustache. No American pig insults a fear. Sounds as if it come from Jed's place. chance. Just give them that welcome, boys. You do it for me. Welcome. The Nazis. Men, we're starting a manhunt to cover this whole valley. Phone every rancher to join us. can't go any further. This horse is lame. We can stay here. Right double with Toller. Your Lord. Chow!
One of their horses, all right. He's lame and he's been ridden plenty hard. Get the rest of the boys. Right. These horses are not going to last much longer. We'll never get out of here. They're trapped like that. It's hopeless. Soldiers of the Reich don't give up that easily. We'll get through. Just resting the horses. Who are you? Where are you from? From across the range. We came out to help in a manhunt. Oh, that's fine. Who are you working for? What's the matter? Can't you talk? We work for the Jackson outfit. He he doesn't hear very well. Gee, that's too bad. Say, it's sure swell of your boss to turn you loose during the branding season. Well, you know Jackson. He wanted to do his little bit to help out. Suppose you fellas head for uh, Wolf Creek. We can use some extra hands there. Okay. Don't let the Germans get you. Not a chance. Imagine trying to fool me, Brandon, at this time of the year. Who's Brandon? What are you talking about? Acting like they were old cow hands. Well, who? The Nazis. Where? On the Hill Road. like that one's done for. But we'd better make sure. How many 
many acres has Mr. Roberts planted? 160. And did you tell him your idea for spraying with an airplane? Of course. And if it works, he's going to plant 2,000. with an airplane? Of course. And if it works, he's going to plant 2,000 acres next spring. Laura! Oh, it's just a scalp wound. I'll help get him into the truck. Yeah. He'll be all right there. Why are you doing that? In case he should wake up saying Heil Hitler. Do you think he might be one of those... You wouldn't. Yes, I would, if necessary. Start driving. as if he was wounded. From these tracks, he must have been picked up by a car. Oh, well, ain't so many cars come along here. He must have been picked up by a car. Oh, well, ain't so many cars come along here. We ought to be able to follow these tread marks. They picked up the trail! Come on! Can you give me a lift? Sure can. Hop in. Thanks. You don't see many people walking in these open spaces. You live around here? Just down the road. You have another 3M ranch? My uncle Dr. Steiner is staying there. Well, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I'm new here. But if you stick around long enough, you will hear about him. You know, he's a very famous scientist, and I'm going to work with him. Gosh, I sure am anxious to meet him. How long is it since you've uh, seen him? Well, not since I was a kid. That's a long time. I can't figure this out. The guy's a regular Houdini. Now you see him and now you don't. We're a bunch of suckers. He slipped off and sent his horse on ahead. Let's start backtracking. Man, he must have been crazy. Why? Well, we were riding along, suddenly he pulls a gun. I grabbed him, the next thing I knew, we were heading off the road and I was thrown clear. Where did you pick him up? About a mile back. That's him, all right. I don't feel too bad. He had it coming. He was one of them Nazi killers. Looks like I've had a narrow escape. Mm. You sure had. Where were you going? Uh, the 3M Ranch. Oh, the 3M. The 3M's? I'm Lullaby Joslin. Hi. I'm Paul Schiller. Doc Steiner's nephew. Is he going to be glad to see you? 
But why are you suspicious of me, Doctor? You even speak with an accent. But I wouldn't accuse you of being a fall of the Fuhrer. Others have. Please understand. I am simply being careful. If I am wrong, I will apologize. If you are working over in the next valley, Mr. Mueller, it can easily be proved. Here come the boys now. Start firing. You to the door. Go on. We've never been welcomed home like this before. Turn your back to me. Now start firing. The next time I'll shoot lower. I hope Laura and the doc are safe. I'm gonna move in. Keep me covered. those guns. What's the idea, Doc? What happened? Well, well, I... you firing at us, and you're not talking yourself out of it. That Naxa came here because he knew them, and they helped him get away. Take it easy, Parker. You heard what Doc said. He was forced to do it. That's true, and we fired into the air so that no one would be hurt. Yes? I guess that's why Pete got shot in the chest. But not by us. Can't you understand? We hate Nazis. You've seen them kill three or four people. We've seen them kill thousands. Well, are you going to let them go? Are we going to take them? You're not taking Doc anywhere. Do you want somebody to take to the authorities? There's a dead Nazi outside. Well, that makes two of them. That makes three of them. Man, I want you to meet the fellow that got him. Paul Schiller, the Doc's nephew. Paul. Uncle Heinrich. Oh, it's so good to see you. I want you to meet your cousin, Laura. How do you do? And my friend Stoney. Howdy. And uh, Tucson. Glad to know you, Paul. Uh, Mr. Roberts. Howdy. And I'm Clem Parker. How do you do? Doc, I've been pretty hostile toward you. But I was wrong. I'm sorry. Oh, forget it. We all make our mistakes. <laughs> well, maybe I... it we all make our mistakes well maybe i was wrong about your experiment too and if you'll have me i'd like to join up Ooh. traitor what here consul this doctor 
Steiner. Listen. The third Nazi, Franz Toller, died in a field of rubber-producing culebra. Ironically enough, the development of this plant is a secret of a German refugee who, to keep it from aiding the Nazi war machine, smuggled it out of Germany. For the past year, he has been experimenting to prove it can be grown successfully on a commercial scale. Do you think it could be? The Gestapo was sure of it when they first warned the consulate that he's wanted. Now that we know where he is, it is up to us to get him. Ja, what a consul. There's also his assistant, Schiller. Get both of them. We want complete information on the experiment. Yes, sir, consul. Heil Hitler! Heil Hitler! Hitler. comes a nephew. Good. We'll grab him first. Stay where you are. Keep quiet and you won't get hurt. Come on, get going. Since we couldn't get your uncle, we'll have to ask you to do us a slight favor. I hope you won't need too much persuading. What do you want? Complete information on Steiner's work, how the plants are grown, and the process he uses to extract the rubber. What use would that be to your ranches? We'll ask the questions. Pick up that pencil and quit stalling. But I haven't been here long enough to learn much about it. Maybe I can refresh your memory. You ready to start writing? I tell you, I don't know. Hold it! Das Hackenkreuz. Das Abzeichen in Deutsche Luftwaffe. Well, you're on the right track. You're on the right track. The touring car passed me a while ago back at the crossroad. Thanks. But Steiner must have his formula written down somewhere, or some notes. Well, if he has, they can't be very complete. His daughter told me he spent hours before they left Germany going over his notes, committing them to memory. Well, then it's up to you again to write it down. Leave it to me. Don't forget, I'm his favorite nephew. There's three men on the road coming this way. They're probably your friends. I want you to get out the road and let them find you. You might need your gun. Wiedersehen. Auf Wiedersehen. Boris. Stoney! Over here! Steiner speaking. We've just had a report that your nephew was kidnapped. Is that correct? Well, Doctor, could this be a nasty reprisal for the killing of those three prisoners? I, I don't know what to think. Who was it, Father? Uh, some newspaper man. Father, we'd better phone Paul's mother. She'll read about it in the papers. Yeah, yeah. Get 
me the long distance operator. When I came to, I, I was in a car somewhere. And before they pushed me out, one of the ranchers said it was only a sample of, of what you would get when, when they caught you. Well, what makes you think that they were ranchers? Well, they look like ranchers. Sounds more like gangsters to me. Yeah, Hitler's gangsters. Did they question you about our work? No. I can't understand that. Unless they were ranchers. Paul, would you recognize them if you saw them again? I... I think so. Wait a minute. We're meeting with the ranchers tomorrow. That will give you a chance to look them over. Hey, that's a good idea. Paul, you nail them, we jail them. Um, Uncle, after what has happened, I think there is something you ought to do. What's that? Put your experiment down on paper. Then if anything should go wrong, the work will go on. Paul is right. I will do that. Uh, let me. It's probably for you, Paul. We called your mother. My mother? Elizabeth? Uh, this is Heinrich. Your brother. Now, now, don't get excited. Yes, yes, we found him. Now, stop worrying. He's all right. Uh, Paul. Newspaper men are frightened her. Uh, hello, Mother? Oh, Paul. Oh, I was almost crazy but very. Did they treat you bad? You sure there's nothing serious? Paul, you don't sound like yourself. Are you all right? Sure, I'm all right. You're just upset. It's only the excitement that makes you think that. Here, I'll, I'll let Laura talk to you. Laura, you tell her I'm okay. This is Laura, Auntie. Oh, yes, yes, he is. Oh, please don't worry. What? Oh, that'll be wonderful. Oh, of course I'll tell him. Goodbye, Auntie. I think she believed me. But don't be surprised if she comes out to see for herself. Hey, Bud. Can you tell me how to get to Valley City? What's up? Steiner has finished writing the formula. It's in the bottom drawer of the lab desk. Good. When can we get it? They're meeting tonight at the house. They'll all be there. They might leave a guard at the lab, but he shouldn't be any problem. What about Steiner? Don't worry, I'll bring him down to meet you. Any problem? What about Steiner? Don't worry, I'll bring him down to meet you. get started or we'll be here all night. Look, men, you all know about Paul being beaten up. Doc believes it was the Gestapo. Why, that's ridiculous. Hard for me to believe that. Say, how do we know the Doc ain't building up an alibi for himself? If anything goes wrong with our crops, he can blame it on Hitler. <laughs> well, gentlemen, I thought we came here to decide about getting an airplane to spray our crops. 
That's the idea. Boys, we're not trying to scare you into this. You've got to decide it on its merits. Doc, you have the floor. By using an airplane with special vitamin spray can control both the amount of moisture and nourishment that the plants receive. Then if we don't use this spray, we'll get a crop or two-thirds of one. That's not the point. To prove this a success, we have got to get not only a full crop, but four crops a year. Well, I don't know. That's a little more money than I can spare right now. Yeah, I got a second mortgage on my ranch already. Uncle Lai left the acid mixture cooking over the burner. It should be hot enough to run the test now. Yeah, we'd better go over. If you will excuse us, gentlemen, we have some work to do. Well, men, this will add up to about... Uh... Oh. Don't turn around. Get inside. Go on. Just in time to give me the key. I have not got it. All right, Doc. Meeting over. Hey, how'd you get in here? Keep quiet. Anything to tell who he is? How about you, my boy? I guess I'll live. His name is S.W. Thompson. He's a member of the German-American Boone. He had company. The guy inside belonged to the Boone, too. I'll be hogtied. Well, men, if a little man with a mustache 5,000 miles away thinks this stuff is worth growing, so should you. Well, I'm told. And you can count on what little I have. And me too. Good. found it. It's from Carson's store. The one I almost bought. So what? So it's a gun that was taken by the Nazis. What makes you think that? There's lots of automatics. Ah, uh, sure, but not with this number. I'll bet you. All right, it's a bet. Oh, well, I don't want to take your <laughs> money. <laughs> but when we get into town, I'm going to check the number. So I didn't know what I was talking about, huh? I wish now I'd taken that bet. But how did it get where I found it? Three Nazis were all killed. The only guy the sheriff didn't find a gun on was the one who died in the station wagon. Say, maybe Paul might be able to help us. Didn't he say the Nazi pulled a gun on him? Yeah. Maybe got it away from him. 
We could ask Paul. I thought we might see him in town, but uh, Bill said he hadn't been in the store. Let's get back to the ranch. The ranch has put up the money for the plane. As soon as it arrives, they plan to start spraying. We must stop it. I received word from abroad, which makes it imperative for us to act quickly. Dr. Steiner must be killed. The rubber plants must be destroyed. A little acid in the spray will take care of the crops, Herr Consul. Ausgezeichnet. What about Steiner? With their crops gone, the ranches will be bankrupt. And, if properly urged, they might turn on our good doctor. If they do, fine. If not, I'll be there to see that he's taken care of. Hi, Paul. Doc's been looking for you. Where have you been? Into town, doing a little shopping. been looking for you. Where have you been? Into town, doing a little shopping. Say, that's my gun. Where'd you find it? Over by the lab. Must have lost it last night when they slugged me. It's a beaut. Where'd you get it? Present from back home. Thanks for finding it. See you later. Oh. Did you hear what I heard? I'll say I did. Yeah, and I don't like it, no matter whose nephew he is. Hey, what's eating him anyway? He tells bigger lies than Hitler. I'm beginning to wonder if that's all they have in common. Oh, I, I don't want to interrupt the family conference. Not at all, Doc. Uh, we just decided you were psychic. Oh, say it. Oh, leaving the meeting last night just when those Nazis were in the lab. I'm afraid I'll have to give Paul credit for that. It was his idea. Uh, by the way, where is he? Uh, he just headed for the lab. Oh, good. So, with Paul's idea... Yeah, let's ask him about that. No. We're finding out he gives mighty funny answers. And I figure they need checking up. Yes, and then your transfer to the bus will bring you right into Valley City. The boys will be there to meet you. Yes, I will. Goodbye. And Elizabeth was so excited she could hardly talk. She thought it was wonderful of you boys to invite her out, and, and so do I. Well, we thought she ought to be here the day the plane takes off. It'll make a real celebration. Well, I'm going to have an awful time keeping it a secret. You're going to have an awful time with us if you don't. I will. Well, we've got a little work to do. See you later, Laura. Okay. Bye, Laura. What's going on here? Let me help you. Thanks. Mm, looks like we're expecting guests. You're not supposed to be any a scat. Permanent guests? What's that? Just a picture. Then why are you trying to hide it? It's all the family, isn't it? Yes, it's that, all right. The boys wanted to surprise you and father and now you've spoiled it. But you've already told me not to be surprised if Mother comes out. Uh, when does she arrive? Wednesday. But if you dare mention a word of it, I'll... Oh, please, the boys will never forgive me. I promise not to say a word. She'll be here on Wednesday, the day before we spray. And unless she is stopped, I'm getting out tonight. I'll get orders around here. Of course, Sir Consul. Not enjoying your immunity from arrest, you can readily understand my concern. Your concern, yes. But not your lack of discipline. Return to the ranch and pretend you have heard nothing. And Mrs. Schiller? I'll take care of her. I still don't understand why you brought me to town. What sort of surprise is this? We'll know in a minute. Over to town. What sort of surprise is this? We'll know in a minute. Well. Paul. This is a surprise. 
Nice. How are you, Mother? Fine, fine. I want you to meet the three musketeers. Stoney, Tucson, and Lullaby. I'll, I'll get your bags for you. Yes. Doc is sure going to be glad to see you, Mrs. Schiller. Oh, yeah. I told the young Schiller to you appear. Act accordingly. Here, I'll take those, Paul. The car's right here. Well, boys, let this be a lesson to us. I never did like surprise parties. This has been a wonderful day for me. Almost too good to be true. And I want to thank you boys for giving Paul and me such a lovely surprise. Tomorrow is the big day. The plane arrives and everything is ready for the big event. After what you see tomorrow, you'll be very proud of Father and Paul. Yeah, yeah. I hope everything turns out all right. I guess the trip has tired me. And if I'm to attend the event, I think I'd better be getting to bed. Mother, I'd like to talk to you a moment. Then uh, I'll show you to your room. It's time we all turn in. <laughs> Thank good night, Doctor. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Now, Mrs. Schiller, I hope... understand the arrangements made with you? Yes. The man who met me on the bus. He said you would arrange for Paul's release as soon as you finish this plane business. Is Paul all right? Quite all right. I said I would go through with this, and I will. But Paul mustn't be hurt. Did they tell you that you are not to leave the house tomorrow morning? Paul will be brought to you as soon as the plane takes off. What time will that be? 10 o'clock. Yeah. And now the pilot is turning her into the wind. There he goes! Well, Doc, you did it. No, Stoney, we did it. All this would not be without you boys and all. Him, there won't be a plant left in the valley. It's been over two hours. Something is wrong and it must be serious or Mrs. Schiller would have been here. Oh, don't worry, Doc. But she came all the way across the country just to see this. Maybe Laura's had trouble with the car. We'll ride back and see what's happened. Good uh, idea. By the time the plane comes back for its last refueling, they'll be here. Don't be so nervous. <laughs> Thanks, but I'm afraid this is my day to be nervous. <laughs> Idea. The spray killed the crops, burned them to cinders. There's not a plant left alive on my ranch. The spray burned the plants? 
Yeah, just like you throwed acid on him. But it couldn't be. Uh, there must be something. You throwed acid on him. But it couldn't be. Uh, there must be some mistake. I mix it myself most carefully. You don't make a mistake when you watch 160 acres shrivel up before your very eyes. And you and your pals are as much responsible as the dark. Laura! Mr. Schiller! What is it? Tell me. Something about Paul? Why, no. He's all right. We left him at the field. Oh, yeah. Yeah, of course. Then what did you come to tell me? Why, we came to take you out there. Doc's been worried. Oh, I, I'm sorry, but I, I can't go. But, Mrs. Schiller, this is a big day for the doc. I know, but I, I can't leave the house. I, I have a very bad headache. I've had an awful time with her. What ails her? I don't know. She's been like that ever since you left. I tried to get her to go out, but she wouldn't. She's been at the radio and watching the clock as if her life depended on it. Doc was right. There is something wrong. Hey, fellas. The doc spray killed the plants. What? Parker and Roberts just came in. Their whole crop burnt to a crisp. And we better get out there. The ranches are plenty sore. What's happened? Mrs. Schiller, you've been acting as though you expected something to happen. I, I, I... Did Paul say anything to you last night that... I can't tell you that. Mrs. Schiller, we've had trouble before with some Nazis. Now we know only two people touched that spray. Your brother and your son. We know Doc's all right, but we have reasons to suspect Paul. Mother and your son. We know Doc's all right, but we have reasons to suspect Paul. Is he connected in any way with the Nazis? If you want to ask any questions, let's get out to the field and ask him of Paul. Please. Please don't question him. If you do, he'll be killed. Who'll kill him? I... I can't tell you. We'd better get out and talk to Paul. Laura, get the car. They mustn't interfere. We've got to stop them. Yes, Auntie. Well, folks, it begins to look as if what started out as a gala celebration will end in disaster. More ranchers are racing in with reports that the spray has destroyed their crops. They're surrounding Dr. Steiner and clamoring for an explanation which Dr. Steiner obviously cannot give. Attention, everyone. We interrupt this program for a special news bulletin. We have just received a flash that the Japanese have made a surprise attack on Pearl Harbor, Hawaii. Without warning, a fleet of Jap planes launched an unprovoked assault on the United States forces, ships, and airfields located there. The casualties at Hickam Field are not known as yet. What are you? Come on, 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 Yes, and it also explains why the treatment that was successful up to yesterday suddenly became poisonous today. Successful up to yesterday suddenly became poisonous today. you men? Have you lost your mind? We haven't lost our minds, but we have lost our crops, and maybe our ranches. You fellas sponsored him, and maybe you should know that the doc sold us out to his fatherland. Yeah. Sure he did. Our attention, please. At Washington, President Roosevelt has announced that he will lay the situation before Congress tomorrow. While from abroad come authenticated reports that Germany and Italy will join Japan by declaring war on the United States. Whoa. He's a traitor, and hanging's too good for it. Please. Let me through. Dr. Steiner, didn't ruin your crops. I am responsible for that. Elizabeth. Paul Schiller, 
the one that you know, he is not my son. He is a Nazi. I never saw him until I came here. Then why didn't you tell us about it before? Because the Nazis are holding my real son, and they threatened to kill him if I said anything. Where is Paul? Paul Schiller. He uh, was in the wreck station wagon. And who are you? Uh, he's Captain Carl Baum, chemical warfare unit attached to the Luftwaffe. The third Nazi. On the basis of your reports, the government is ready to give the members of Valley City every possible aid in developing your Calibra project. The Office of Research hopes to see the entire valley under cultivation. Adequate loans will be arranged through the local bank and... Well, I, I guess that's about all. Wait a minute. We appreciate the fine work you're doing, and it's my personal opinion, Doctor, that when this war is won, you and your associates can justifiably feel proud of your contribution to the winning war effort. <laughs> 